Well, once again, thank you for joining us for week number one of our new sermon series here at 922 Ministries, Truth, Whose Do You Listen To? And if any of you know Isaiah, that's probably going to cause him nightmares uh, for the next how many years of his life, all those people on his shoulder talking in his ear, which is kind of why we want to unpack this series. There are so many different voices in our world, people that we listen to, places that we turn to, uh, and sometimes even ourself, to get the answer on truth. And it's not anything new. Go back 2,000 years, if you remember, to Jesus on trial with Pontius Pilate. Pilate posed perhaps one of the most well-known and famous questions of all times. And in talking to Jesus, he, he said, what is truth? I mean, Jesus was unpacking things, trying to reinforce spiritual truths to Pilate. And Pilate goes, but what is truth? I mean, since the beginning of time, since the beginning of human life, human beings have been in search of the truth. And we, we all want to know it because I believe deep down, every last human being wants to make sure that what they believe is true. And that's what makes this series so important. Because we live in a world where there are billions of people with millions and millions of beliefs. And it can be very confusing. Which is why over the course of the next four weeks, today and, and the following three weekends, we're going to try and answer that question regarding truth. Whose do I listen to? Who should I follow? Who has the truth? Because there are so many different places to turn to. Which is why today we're going to focus in on week number one on, on you and me, us individually. But before I do, I want to give you a reason why this series matters. And coming back the following three weeks, what's the why behind this series? Not just a series pastors want to talk about and, and emphasize some important things, but Jesus himself is going to give you the answer. Why this series? Why be on search for who to listen to when it comes to truth? Jesus said this in John chapter 8. The truth will set you free. Knowing the truth will give you spiritual freedom. It'll set you free. If you know the right things to believe, Jesus says that truth will bring you spiritual freedom. The truth will set you free. Emotionally, when you know the truth, when you get the answers, you can find peace even in the midst of difficult circumstances. You can find rest for your soul when things are blowing up all around you. Relationally, you can find freedom when you know the truth. But how God would have you interact, how God would have you live, if you apply those principles, Jesus says the truth will set you free. And I don't think there's any one of us who would argue that we don't want that. That we don't want to experience or have that in our lives. But in order to unpack that and find the answer to that, we need to wrestle with those different areas of our life that where we listen to people and rely on them for the truth. Which is why week number one is so important to set the stage, because it's probably going to define the rest of them, at least intersect with all of them, and look at my truth. Maybe you've heard the phrase before, uh, said by someone, uh, be true to yourself. Some experts in today's world argue that it's 21st century America's motto. Like, live your best life. You do you. Go with your gut. Be true to yourself. Has anyone ever told you that? Like, maybe you were wondering, where should I go to college? And, and what kind of profession do I want? And someone said to you, just be true to yourself. Follow your heart. Go where you want to go. And in and of itself, that advice isn't bad. It's not wrong. In fact, there's a lot of truth to being true to yourself, I think. There's a part of me that's thankful that, that I live in 21st century America as a male who, who doesn't quite fit the stereotypical picture of men in Wisconsin. Like, I'm 48 years old, and you know the last two cars I drove? A red little beetle, like a bug, up and down French Road. You see the little red bug, and, and you laugh and smile because you wonder, what's that dude doing in that car? And now I drive a Honda Fit, small little black putt-putt car, gets great gas mileage. You know what I've never had or owned? 
A truck. I don't much look the picture of a lot of people who live in Wisconsin. But you know what? You accept me because you allow me to be true to myself. I don't hunt or fish. I've now offended about 80% of you. I don't own a gun. I've shot a deer once in my life, and if you've seen a picture of it, it was smaller than Bambi because someone took me hunting and said, try, and I actually hit it, and that was it. I'm done. It's not something I enjoy or appreciate, and, and that's okay. You, you accept that. People in our world today are, are okay with me being true to me. In fact, I sold my house because I don't want to do yard work. You've heard that whole story before, and, and, and I'm true to myself. And I don't think that's wrong. But being true to yourself might be wrong at times. In fact, if you listen to how some people define it, you, you might have some yellow lights or red lights going off in your brain. Being true to yourself means more than just being yourself. To be true is to be loyal and to act in your best interest. I can see that, but, but sometimes I could do things that are in my best interest that are definitely going to hurt someone else. Does that mean I can... Just be true to myself? Should I? Or how about this definition? Being true to yourself is a personal choice for truth. You making choices about how you want to live. You have the total power to live your life any way you want and to be faithful and factual to the truth about you. From a worldly perspective, that's true. But is that the truth? Now, maybe one more will help you understand the dilemma we're in today. Being true to yourself, to find this way, helps you remember that you're in charge. You're the boss of you. You set the ground rules and the boundaries. No one else has that superb power or pleasure. No one else ever should live your truth. Like, in, And I can see myself saying to my son, son, you are in control of your life, the decisions you make. You set the ground rules you choose what you want to do and where you should go. And, and it might be right, but, but if I follow it up with, you get to determine what's right and wrong, am I potentially in danger when it comes to following my truth? Do you kind of see the dilemma? Like God made us all uniquely, gifted us differently. So there's different paths we're going to follow, different things that are going to define us. And it's not right or wrong. But the dilemma of my truth is you shouldn't care what anyone else, is, uh, anyone else thinks. And yet, is that true? Because I maybe should care what other people think? That's why my truth is so tricky. But that's nothing new. I mean, Jesus said the truth will set you free, but we really need to wrestle with and answer the question at the end of the day for week number one, if you're filling in the blanks, I want to give you two answers to this question to help you understand the truth today. When it comes to the truth, should you trust your heart? Go with your gut. Live your truth. Just you do you. Be true to yourself. Should you trust your heart? Because a lot of people are going to tell you that you should. And your mind is going to tell you at times that you should. There are times when you might argue, and, and I might agree that you should, but should you, always, should you unequivocally trust your heart? So to get answer number one, I want to take you to a section of Scripture 700 years before Jesus was born. To prove to you that this isn't a 21st century American issue, this is a, an issue that people have struggled with and wrestled with since the beginning of, of time. It's not just something that is new on the scene. Shakespeare, 400 years ago, wrote a play, maybe you remember it from your Brit Lit class days, called Hamlet, and, and, and in the discussion was, to thine own self be true. And in Jeremiah's day, people were being true to themselves. And so I'm going to take you there to see what God lays out as the two possible paths when you get to the, the fork in the road and intersection of, of Truth Avenue. In which path should I proceed down to make sure I'm remaining in line with the truth. I have the truth. I, I'm listening to the voice of truth. And how does my truth align with that? Well, Jeremiah says there's a fork in the road in that intersection, and you're going to pursue one of two paths. Path A, when it comes to 
following your heart might lead you down this path. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parts places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. Now that sounds like a really miserable, crappy place to live, right? Hot, overwhelmingly warm, nothing grows, uh, parched places, desert, nothing there is a sign or, or a part of anything that prospers. That's path A, that's at the fork in the road when it comes to truth that you need to be aware of when it comes to your heart. And then Jeremiah says this, path B, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are green, it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Around 922 ministries, you hear us talk about roots equal fruit. In other words, Jeremiah is saying, the person who trusts in the Lord is a rooted individual and they're going to see fruit. They're going to be blessed. They're going to spiritually prosper. There's going to be difficult times, but they won't even worry. They're, they won't fear when the heat comes because they, they know God has them. Now, if you're at the, the fork in the road of Truth Avenue and you've got to pick the right path, and, and those are the two options, how many of you are taking path A? Like the parched land. The place of no prosperity land. Anyone? Anyone? No takers. Like how many of your option B? That. Like, yeah, absolutely. Why? Because it seems so obvious, doesn't it? I mean, and you would think if it seems so obvious that your heart, you, your heart could get it right, right? You would make that choice. Day after day, month after month, year after year, I, can be, I should be able to, to decipher that in my heart to pursue that path, right? Because it seems so obvious. But here's what Jeremiah says next, because in Jeremiah's world, so many people were choosing that path. They preferred their way. They followed and worshipped other gods. They lived as they wanted. They pursued their truth. And we're off on the wrong path. How? Well, you want to answer the question, should I trust my heart? Can I trust my heart when it comes to the truth? Jeremiah says, how did so many people end up on that path? The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. And when Jeremiah uses the word heart, he's not talking about your human heart, the blood pumping part of your heart. He's talking about the center of who you are, the center of your being, the thing that out of the heart flow blank, blank, and blank, Jesus said. It's, it's the center of your, your spiritual heart uh, and truth and life and relationship with God. Everything flows out of your heart. And, and Jeremiah says, why are so many people down path A? Is because their heart is deceitful. Their heart is beyond cure. And no one can understand the heart. Like to the human heart and mind, their, their plans seem to make sense. It's easy for the human heart and mind at times to justify behavior that takes them down the wrong path. When you hear the phrase, be true to yourself, like how many people haven't said that when what they were really saying is, it feels good, I'm simply going to do it. Or that's my truth because that's the path of least resistance. Or I'm choosing that path even though I know there are spiritual implications because of financial advantages. Like I'm going to wrong people, I'm going to do the wrong thing because it brings me a benefit or a blessing. That's my truth. Watch out for number one. Like do you start to get the, the problem with if you follow your heart where it can lead you? Jeremiah lays out the problem, and, and you might say, but Pastor Tim, 2,700 years ago, like, times have changed. Get with the times. Sometimes that's the issue of the heart. Because God doesn't change. So when you start making the argument that times have changed, and, and my truth is different than 2,000 years ago truth, and, and I get to define the truth. I, can you understand what happens when my heart becomes the, 
the place where truth is defined and determined, I make myself God and minimize God and endanger my relationship with God. And the heart is so subtle. I mean, Paul, 700 years later, understood the human heart. Look at what the Apostle Paul said, do not deceive yourselves. Like if any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, they should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. Like if, if you think your wisdom can figure it all out and your truth is better than anyone else's truth and, and you have all the answers and that's the path you're going down and you're going to follow, you need to really open your eyes and do some soul searching and, and maybe dig into your heart. Because when you answer the question, can I trust my heart? Jeremiah would say this, no, you can't always trust your heart. You shouldn't always trust your heart. It'd be really wise for you not to trust your heart because it can deceive you. Like it can cause you to believe something is for your good and it has nothing to do with your spiritual good. It can lead you to cross lines because of a relationship, because of money, because of anything and everything that your heart believes is best. And Jeremiah would say no, because my truth, when it comes from my heart, is subjective. And subjective truth is scary. You know what subjective truth is? Think of everything that's transpired in 2020. And I'm just going to use one example, and please forgive me, I don't know what side of the aisle you're on, but you're on one side. But everyone's claim is, in the middle of the pandemic and everything that's gone on, is follow the science. Right? Those of you who are on one side and the other side, you both have followed people who are telling you this is the science. Whose truth are you listening to? You know what it's ended up being? You've chosen a side and it has become your truth. And you're making decisions based on that. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just trying to give you an example of what happens when truth is subjective. And you know what's happened to a lot of us? It's become personal and we are passionate and we are hunkered down. And you know what happens when you get hunkered down in, in things you're passionate about? When they're your truth? And if they impact you spiritually, like... At the end of the day, wearing masks, vaccines, and those things are worldly things. You can be passionate about them, but, but if you get hunkered down in, in a your truth that leads you away from God and you're passionate about it and it's become personal to you, you might die in it. You might go down swinging for it. And that's what Jeremiah wants you to be aware of. He would say, no. You can't trust your heart. Your heart. Your heart on your own. And now you're sitting there probably saying, Pastor Tim, I know my heart has deceived me so many times over. How do I, I deal with that? I mean, the voice that I listen to more than any other voice is my heart. Uh, and, and that voice lies to me so many times over. Pursue that. Believe that. Live your best life. Cross that line. Justify that behavior. <laughs> like, is there any hope for me? <laughs> like, I, I live in this body and have this mind and if my truth affects so much of what I do and I shouldn't listen to it, I'm doomed. And I would say no. No. Because that's just one answer to the question that I want you to hear. But I need you to have another answer and know another truth. Because when it comes to the truth, who should I listen to? Jeremiah would say, when it comes to your heart, no, because subjective truth is scary truth. But there's also another truth. A person who didn't live by subjective truth, but rather he lived objectively. His name is Jesus. The Bible actually tells us about him. And, and there are some of you here who are going to say, but Pastor Tim, I'm not sure I rely on church and the Bible and follow that truth. Okay, I give you that. Come back week number three. We're going to talk about church truth. I want to unpack that with you. But just let me argue with you for the sake of today that, that the Bible is true. If the Bible's true, then the Bible tells this to us about 
how we can deal with our heart for all the times it's been deceived. It begins with a man named Jesus. The Bible says this about Jesus. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace. Grace is God's undeserved love for sinners, for everyone who ever walked path A, for everyone who, who lived their best life, for everyone who always followed their truth and disobeyed God's truths. Jesus came full of grace for you and for me. And he also bought truth. And Jesus was someone who followed the truth. And he lived objective truth. Like, you know what Jesus did? He confronted sin and spoke the truth to it. He never backed away when others were having their own personal truth about what they believed was right and wrong. Jesus spoke into it and said no. Jesus didn't follow the crowd and, and their truth of, of who was to be favored and, and who was to be looked down on. You know who Jesus hung out with? The oppressed, the poor, the needy. He told stories about helping those in need and, and loving your neighbor. Like Jesus lived the truth. He brought the truth. And here's the difference about Jesus, different than you and me. The Bible says there was, our hearts have been deceived. Our, our hearts are deceitful. But, but look at what Peter said about Jesus. He committed no sin. He never walked path A. And no deceit, not a single deceitful word, not a single deceitful thing was ever found in his mouth. Ever. Ever. And you know what that means for you and for me? There is hope. Because the one who is the truth came to give you grace. And he walked to a cross. He walked that path. And as they hurled insults at him, he said not a harmful thing. And he willingly died so that you and I might have life. I mean, just think about that. If that's the case, if, if Jesus is God, if, if he is grace and truth, if no sin was in his mouth and, and he came to earth, that, you know what that means for you and for me? He did what we couldn't do and, and when he speaks, we should listen. And that's why I want you to listen to this when it comes to my heart and should I listen to my heart? Is it possible that my truth, being truthful to myself and my heart can, can maybe not always be wrong? That, and Jesus would say, Yes. Because as he prayed the night before he died, he said, Lord, sanctify them, make them holy, set them apart. Sanctify them by the truth. Make them holy by the truth. What is truth, Pilate asked. What is truth, you should ask. Who should I listen to for truth? Jesus would say, listen to God, your word, Jesus said. God, your word, the things you've given us, is truth. In the Bible, I believe it's about 137 times you will find the word truth. 99 of 137 times, this is according to Pastor Mike, so it's pretty reliable. He probably searched it backwards and forwards. 99 times when the word truth is found, it has a certain word in front of it. You know what word that is? The, the truth. 70% of the times when the word truth is used in the Bible, it is identified with the specific article, the truth. And it is so important in the Bible. Do you know what word is never found in front of the word truth in the Bible? Ever, 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 not 1%, not 0.1%, not 0.23%, never, ever, ever, my truth. Jesus never used it, my truth. He said, your truth, the truth. Never, ever once in 130 some times, my truth is ever used. Which is why what Jesus says, your word is truth. When you want the truth, and if it's the truth that'll set you free, you need to know the word. You need to be in the word. The word is what makes you holy. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God's word at work brought you out of sin and into the light. In our first service today, there was a baby who was baptized, brought into God's family. An amazing, amazing gift from God. And the Bible says, in baptism, he offers and gives new life. So when it comes to the truth and, and listening to your heart, Jesus would say, here's how you find the truth, God's word, 
And it's how you're made holy. It's how you're put on path B. It's the only way you can stay on path B. But while you're on path B, can I, should I listen to my heart? Yes, you can. Because of this. Here's a man, King David, from the Old Testament, who wasn't like Jesus. He wasn't perfect. And there was a pretty significant time in his life when his, his heart and his mouth were, were filled with deceit. Like if there's anyone who ever modeled what happens when you follow your truth, remember when David wrote these words of Psalm 51, they are a reference point to him committing adultery with Bathsheba, Bathsheba. And you know why David went down that path? He saw a beautiful woman. He lusted after her. He said, my truth is that looks good. I would love to do that. He invited her in and he did. I'm the king. I get to do what I want. And you know what happened next? She got pregnant. And you know what King David said? Oh no, I'm the king and this is bad. One of my men who fights for me, I got his wife pregnant. I need to do something about this. I better cover it up instead of own it. That's my truth. When he couldn't cover it up by getting Uriah to sleep with his wife and, and pawn off the pregnancy, he, he had her murdered because no nation needs this kind of issue to cause turmoil, right? What will tabloids do when they get a hold of this? I'm the king. It's for the good of the kingdom. One man should die. Like, you understand what the deceptive head and heart can do when your tr subjective truth kicks in? Like, if there's anybody whose heart was so flawed beyond hope, it's that guy, right? That guy knew the solution. That he could be sanctified by the truth, made holy. And he called on God, which I would call on you to do as well, each and every day to say, God created me a pure heart. God can give you a new heart. The Holy Spirit living in you can, can change your heart. Like, yes, your heart by birth is deceptive. Your heart, this side of heaven, will be lured by the devil and the voices of the world and, and by your own wrong thoughts at times. But, but God can and God does and God will create in you a new heart. He's given it to you in Jesus Christ. He's washed away your sins and, and he's made you new. And, and your heart is something you can listen to if, if, and when it's aligned with God's heart. And that's what Proverbs chapter 4 says. Above all else, right in the middle there, it says, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Like, guard your heart. Because everything you do flows from it. If your heart is in line with God's heart, you will guard it when you're tempted to, to just do it because it feels good. If you're guarding your heart and you're in the word, you will know what God says. And as much as you would love to lash out in anger at that person who hurt you, who betrayed you, who went behind your back, who, who got your position by, by taking you down, you'll listen to God instead. You'll, you'll turn the other cheek. You'll, in humility and love, forgive. Because that's the truth that sets you free. Like, I could give you a laundry list of things that the world would say, just be true to your heart. And by doing so, it would be so wrong. And I could give you a list of things God says, be true to your heart. And if that's in line with God's word, I would say, follow your heart because you're following God. Guard your heart. Because everything you do flows from it. Fix your eyes directly in front of you. Be careful in the paths you choose, path A or path B. Don't turn to the right or to the left. It's a dangerous world out there. It's so easy to get offline. If you follow your heart, you might be deceived. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. In other words, God says, when it comes to your heart, should I listen to it? Can I listen to it? Before I said no, when that truth is subjective, when it's your truth and you're following it, you better be very careful. But the Bible tells us the answer could also be this. The answer could be yes. When you let God's truths guide and guard your heart. You know what the Bible says about King David after that incident later on, many chapters later, about King David's heart? 
The Bible refers to David like they refer to no one else. He was a man after God's own heart. That man. The one on the roof staring at that woman, lust, adultery man, the murderer man. He was a man after God's own heart. You know if you have, have a heart that's after God's own heart? It's a humble heart that confesses the times you went down your own path and believed your truth and were deceived by it. It's a humble heart that confesses the failures and shortcomings and, and then gets aligned with God's truth to guard the heart. Which is why I need you to take a huge action step. For many of you, you you're dabbling in it right now. You maybe have set it aside. Life is really busy. But you know the only way it's possible to do this? Like if, if you really want to listen to your heart and make sure it's in tune with God's heart to not be deceived and to know what is true and what isn't true, what path I should be on, the gather route isn't enough. Like I talk for about 30 to 35 minutes on a Sunday. If that's all you're getting on a regular basis, you will not be able to guard your heart. Because you know who works 167 other hours of the week? His name is the devil. You know who you're listening to? The voice in your head more than any other? Your own sinful voice? And that will steer you down the path of your sinful heart? Like if you are not in God's word, if you are not having your eyes on what God says, if you're not turning to God's word for guidance, should I do that? Does God want me to do that? What is the truth? You will not be able to guard your heart. And and I need you, I I want you, God calls for you to guard your heart and he longs to guide it. But you need to have a grow root that is strong and solid so that you are on the right path. Because when you are, you can can listen to your heart because you're being guided by God's truths. And he's the one doing the guarding. And we want to help you with that. Like, go to the YouVersion app and, and, and find millions and millions of Bible studies. Some by Time of Grace who we partner with. If, if you want other resources, we can give you booklets and pamphlets. We'd love to connect you to God's Word. We would tell you what book of the Bible to read. We can give you four questions to, to answer each and every day. Start with five minutes this week. But I want you, God wants you, and I know you want the truth. I believe that because you believe what Jesus says. The truth will set you free. And God wants you to be able to listen to your your truth. But he needs it to be aligned with his. And I think that's something we should stop for today and pray for. And come back next week and talk about some more truth and whose do we listen to. But first, if we can guard our heart and have it be guided by God's word, God promises the truth will set you and I free. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's so easy to follow our heart. Things we're passionate about, the things that that are personal, sometimes blind us to the truth. Like the, the world screams and says, live your truth. Be true to yourself. There are so many things in the world, Lord, that we can look at and say, well, that would be enjoyable. That would be good. That might feel good. Everyone else is doing it, so why don't I follow that truth? But there's so much danger in that, Lord, just like Jeremiah said, because the heart is deceitful. Which is why we thank you, Jesus, that you came full of grace and truth. That's why we long to hear your words that remind us of where we can find it. Your word is truth. And it's why we need to remember that with your power and with your strength and because of God, we can have a clean and pure heart. Which means by your power and help, we can guard our heart. So Lord, as we spiritually grow each and every day, help us have hearts that are like yours, aligned with you, knowing that the truth will set us free.